only going to be able to get this one video out today. My brother-in-law, his father passed away last week. The funeral was this morning. So obviously, I'm not going to have the time to get both videos out today. Hopefully, I'll be able to make up for the missed video this weekend. Now, growing up, I was a huge fan of professional wrestling. I grew up in what I like to call the golden age of wrestling. I actually feel sorry for kids who are subjected to the garbage they call wrestling today. Hell, it's not even called wrestling anymore. It's sports entertainment, KC. Get it right. Back in the 90s, the industry was filled with big stars. You had the Monday Night Wars between WCW and the WWF, Steve Austin, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, DX, and the NWO. For 20 or 30 years, Vince McMahon was untouchable. He had this ability to create stars. Vince McMahon, for the longest time, seemed unbeatable. He bought up all of his competition. He transformed the WWF into a global entertainment company. For decades, it seemed no opponent was strong enough to defeat Vince McMahon. But there's one opponent that remains undefeated. There is one opponent that even the biggest icons across any sport or entertainment genre has never been able to defeat. Michael Jordan, Drew Brees, hell, eventually Tom Brady will succumb to his greatness, Muhammad Ali, and yes, even Vince McMahon. All of these legendary men have been defeated by Father Time. I have not watched wrestling in decades, but I do still monitor what's going on with the business. I don't give a shit what happens in the ring. I can't name one star right now in WWE, which is the main problem. For many years, wrestling fans have been complaining that Vince McMahon's out of touch with his audience, which generally happens as men get older. It's incredibly difficult for a 75, 76-year-old man to relate to teenagers and young men in their 20s. The rise of Vince McMahon and the WWF in the 1980s and 90s, it coincided with the rise of another classic American institution, Lorne Michaels and Saturday Night Live. SNL used to be appointment television. I know it's hard to believe now, but SNL used to produce skits that were actually funny. No public figure was off limits, especially presidents. They absolutely destroyed Bill Clinton during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Will Farrell, he was amazing when he would make fun of George Bush. They went after Barack Obama. Unfortunately, Saturday Night Live is another example of what happens to a once great platform when their creator gets too old and out of touch, and more importantly, when they allow themselves to become infected with the woke fungus. Some of you might not be old enough to remember this, but back in the early 90s, SNL produced a classic skit with Patrick Swayze and Chris Farley. Both of them were auditioning to be Chippendales dancers. Now, during the skit, Chris Farley took off his shirt and started dancing around like a beached whale. It's fucking classic. It's what sketch comedy used to be. That skit would never happen today. Why? We cannot allow Chris Farley to remove his shirt. That is fat shaming. Someone in our audience might be suffering from fat phobia. Oh, seeing a fellow fat person shirtless could trigger painful memories of looking at themselves in the mirror. We cannot be responsible for that level of pain. In the late 90s, Tim Meadows starred as the ladies' man, another classic. He would sip on his cabarsier, taking calls from lonely dudes who were having trouble dipping their wang in a woman's tank. Again, this skit would never happen on Saturday Night Live today. Instead of the ladies' man, they'd have to call it the non-binary shitfuck. Hello, I am the non-binary shitfuck, going by they, them pronouns. Give me a call with your romantic queries. I can teach you how to properly use a cucumber, how to turn that drumstick into a pleasuring device for your bongo. I am a self-taught expert on how to properly use the vacuum cleaner for fellatio. Give me a call. I'd love to play with your balls, if you still have them. Over the last five or six years, Lorne Michaels has demonstrated this uncanny ability to be completely out of touch with his audience. Saturday Night Live has always been political, but for the most part, it was politically balanced. Like I said, they went after Bill Clinton just as hard as they went after George Bush. The first sign that shit was changing at SNL happened right after the 2016 election. Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton. The woke called it voter fraud. The rest of us called it a miracle. 
The cold open for SNL, it's one of the biggest sketches of the show, one of the most important too. The cold open sets the tone. It's supposed to be lighthearted. It's supposed to be funny. I mean, it's a fucking comedy show. The entire premise is to make people laugh. After the 2016 election, there were so many angles Lorne Michaels could have taken. He could have produced a skit with Alec Baldwin playing Donald Trump talking about how he cheated the election. He could have produced a skit about Hillary Clinton, angry that she lost and taking out her frustrations on Bill Clinton. They had a fucking week to think of something good. Instead, this was the cold open after the 2016 election. Watch for yourself. giving up, and neither should you. And live from New York, it's Saturday night. Hopefully that didn't get taken down for copyright reasons. I had to condense that clip because that went on for several minutes. Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton singing hallelujah, claiming that she was not giving up and neither should you. Did you find any of that funny? That did not look like Saturday Night Live. It looked like a fucking funeral. Oh, here lies the future of America. Instead of electing our first mutant president, we elected our first orange president. This country is full of misogynists. Why do Americans discriminate against mutants? How are we ever going to elect our first non-binary broom handle if we can't get our beloved mutant elected? Since 2016, Lorne Michaels fell into the same trap as CNN. You know the trap. Orange man bad. That was all well and good when Donald Trump was in office. To be honest with you, there were some segments they produced about Donald Trump that I thought were good. I thought Alec Baldwin played Donald Trump really well. The problem is, Donald Trump ain't in office anymore. Lauren Michaels, they have taken it relatively easy on Joe Biden, just like the rest of the mainstream media. We have to protect bumbling Biden. He's going to be my bunkmate in the nursing home in two years. When Donald Trump was president, SNL was averaging over 7 million viewers. Since Joe Biden's been in office, they've lost nearly 2 million viewers, with the season premiere just last year down 50% compared to 2020. But have no fear. Oh, have no fear. Lauren Michaels has the perfect solution to this problem. One of the problems, if not the main problem over the last 10 or 15 years, has been the cast. Check it out for yourself. SNL hasn't had a cast with a favorability rating over 50% in 20 years, which makes complete sense when you think about it because the show hasn't been good in 20 years. But like I said, Lorne Michaels has the solution to the problem. At 77 years old, he wants to prove he's still in touch with his audience. Pete Davidson, Kate McKinnon, they're gone, two of the most popular cast members on the show. I struggled to use the word popular when describing Pete Davidson, He's not popular in the normal sense, like Michael Jordan was popular in the 90s. Pete Davidson is popular amongst the male butt sniffers and dudes with purple hair like Megan Rapino. But either way, those two are gone, along with a handful of other cast members no one gives a fuck about. Over the summer, Lorne Michaels conducted focus groups with his audience. SNL used to have an audience filled with normal people. Today, the audience of Saturday Night Live is heavily woke and heavily bongoed. Lorne Michaels asked the focus group, how can we attract new viewers? We have lost millions of viewers. What can we do to attract a new audience? An organism in the back of the room raised its tail. I don't want to offend them by calling them a person. It's entirely possible they identify as a dinosaur. It raised its tail to get Lorne Michaels' attention and answer the question. Lorne, I have an idea. You should hire the first non-binary cast member that will attract the less than 1% of people in this country who identify as a complete dumbass. Are you excited? Another first? Another history-making moment? Because Lorne Michaels listened. He went out and hired something named Molly Kearney. Check her out for yourself. KC, how dare you misgender Molly? She, I mean they, go by they, them pronouns. 
Oops, my fucking bad. I thought it was a safe assumption with a name like Molly. It was a fucking girl instead of an it or they. Molly also goes by the name, and I'm not kidding when I say this. Molly also goes by the name Meat Brick. Uh, what? Meat Brick? Meat Brick? What the fuck am I supposed to say to that? There's not much I can share with you about Meat Brick or Molly for short. She's relatively unknown. Her Wikipedia page was literally created after SNL proudly announced it was joining the show. We are two weeks away from the season premiere of Saturday Night Live. I expect it will be an unmitigated disaster. I'm sure the other three or four people who were delusional enough to think they were born without a gender will tune in to see Molly in action. But how are they, I just thought about something. How are they going to cast her? She's non-binary. She can't play a man or a woman, right? What are they going to do? Have her cast as the potted plant, the background? Maybe she could be the chair during Weekend Update. I know who won't be watching to find out. This guy, along with millions of others. This show needs to end. NBC needs to cancel Saturday Night Live. This is becoming embarrassing. Not becoming. It's been embarrassing for a while now, just like the rest of late night television. But let me know what you guys think. SNL hires the first non-binary cast member. Will this increase their struggling ratings or cause more people to turn it off? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.